Yellow, yellow, yellow. All right, everybody. Ignore my stupid haircut, okay? Oh, my gosh. And ignore the insensitive and racist imagery on the back of my hat. Also, ignore my sideburns. They're all screwed up. Um, this is just don't even don't you know if I had a better way to do this where I could present the audio and all of that I don't even know that I would do a video portion necessarily but it is what it is all right well the leaf blowers are going today so we should probably make it quick <laughs> um yeah so about Anthony Rizzo basically Anthony Rizzo is one of a few cubs who after this season, the Cubs may or may not be moving on from. Um, I mean, I don't know. I guess first first things first, I need to answer a question for myself. Was Javier Baez a part of the 2016 Cubs? Because if so, I'm sorry, man. I just don't remember. Um, yeah, he made his debut in 2014. So, And people are probably like, oh, are you kidding me? <laughs> He was the NLCS MVP in 2016. So, yeah, he was on the Cubs. Um, basically, um, between Anthony Rizzo, Chris Bryant, and Javier Baez, one, two, or maybe all three will be gone. Um, that's actually a similar situation to the Kansas City Royals of a few years ago. Um, they had Lorenzo Kane, Bruce Moustakis, Eric Hosmer, um, oh, the shortstop. Oh, my God. Their shortstop, who I thought might have been the best out of them all. Oh, my gosh. I'm so stupid. 2015 Kansas City. The Royals. You know, I shouldn't be doing this. I just, you know, I should have my homework done. But then I start, you know, going off on different things. Seriously? Gosh. Let's see if this works. Royals 2015 shortstop. Alcides Escobar. Thank you, Google. So, between Escobar, Bruce Moustakis, Lorenzo Kane, Air Cosmer, the Royals, who had been to two World Series and had actually won one, broke through and won one, it's one of those things. I was, it was like I was referring the other day uh, to the Tampa Bay Rays. Tampa Bay Rays, they built this winner, and then they had to break it up because they couldn't afford it. Obviously, the Kansas City Royals couldn't afford for huge contracts like that. That's just not how a, you know, one of those market teams works. Um, correct me if I'm wrong, but like the the Kansas City Athletics. I was reading this the other day. The Kansas City Athletics move to Oakland because Oakland was apparently greener pastures in terms of a larger market. And I find that hilarious because Oakland has now had the worst park in all of baseball for years and years. And has notoriously been trying to leave Oakland because it's just been so disastrous for them. The pro football team left twice, I think. <laughs> so Oakland being this like place where they thought, oh, we're going to take the, because the athletics franchise is the second winningest franchise in the, in the history of the American league behind only the Yankees. But the athletics have changed cities three times from Philadelphia to Kansas city and now Oakland, or they've changed cities twice, I guess they're in their third location. Wow. That is loud. Um, so basically, um, the the Royals are looking a lot like the Cubs now, where the Cubs have built this thing, and you're thinking, how is that possible? The the Cubs are the Cubs are one of the biggest markets in all of baseball. Like they they have two teams for crying out loud. How is this possible? Well, if you can guess. Um, COVID-19 played a part in it and basically the Cubs who are under new management and all of that, they're cash strapped. Is this serious? Hey, I'm working here. So anyway, the cash strapped Cubs who are now under new management because they let Theo Epstein go. That's a whole different story. 
They're looking like the Kansas City Royals of a few years ago, where they're really going to be faced with some tough decisions. And I got to be honest, a couple years ago, you'd think Chris Bryant, I'm not even going to look at Chris Bryant's numbers because I don't need to. Chris Bryant went from a superstar to having more or less fallen off the face of the known earth. I mean, if this thing is flat, he fell straight off the straight off the side of it. I mean, Chris Bryant is nowhere to be seen. Meanwhile, Anthony Rizzo had put up four straight seasons of 100 RBIs, over 30 home runs. He's consistent. 2019, he puts up 27 homers, 94 RBIs, bats 293, and then just throw away last season because for most guys, last year was a throwaway season. There's no way to project stats. So when you play 162 games and all of a sudden you play 100 less, it's just there's just so many different variables that go into it. I mean, it some guys take longer. Sometimes guys actually need a slump to then, you know, get going. And if you're only just starting to slump before you can break out of it, <laughs> well then you ended up the season with all of your numbers from when you were slumping. You never ended up hitting your your resurgence. The the Cleveland Indians of 2005 didn't win anything, but they're famous for and it was like September and August, they like or August and September, they didn't lose a game or something. I mean, and this was after 2001 when they blew it up. It took four years, but then oh boy, here those Indians are going to be good. And sorry, the Cleveland baseball team, they're going to be good. And then all of a sudden, 2007, they're a game away from the World Series. Um, I I think that that Anthony Rizzo is super consistent. Um, he's just hitting, this will be his age 31 season. So he's really just starting to enter his prime. I mean, you could argue he, he's may or may not have left his prime, but I mean, if, if we could ignore 2020 and he can pick back up, he's still right in his prime. And I just think Chris Bryant is more of a name than anything at this point. I think Anthony Rizzo, now we've we've discussed contracts like Miguel Cabrera and Albert Pujols where, I don't know, do you trust these big fat first basemen to not continue to get big and fat and more and more useless to your team or less and less valuable? But to my knowledge, Anthony Rizzo is it has a good glove. Um as far as I'm concerned, Anthony Rizzo is actually one of the better defensive first basemen in all of baseball. Um, I'm not sure if he has any gold gloves, but you know he's sort of a more – for being a bigger guy, he's definitely a more athletic first baseman. He's got four gold gloves, and even in a down 2020, he still won the gold glove. So – not like he's not like Cabrera or Pujols. Cabrera and Pujols say what you will, but they were never. And I know Cabrera started out at third base. They were never the the defensive first baseman that Anthony Rizzo is. I just I don't know. I think they got him for Andrew Kashner. That was the name. My friend Jacob and I uh, yesterday were talking about how it seems like half the league used to be a pitching prospect for the Baltimore Orioles and how those Baltimore Oriole pitching prospects all had to go somewhere else to be good. Unless you're Andrew Kashner, then you'd end up on Baltimore, and that's where you end up just, like, ruining the rest of what is your career. Because I think that guy's supposed to be a pretty big – I mean, he's traded for Anthony Rizzo. I, I could be misremembering all of this, but – excuse me. Yeah, a- Andrew Kashner stinks. And if you're considered a pitching prospect um, of the last 15 years – you probably uh, were doing so for the Baltimore Orioles. <laughs> so, yeah, Javier Baez, I'm just – I'm sorry. There's been so many guys that have come up with hype, and I've just totally – like, I'm in. Like, Ronald Cooney Jr., he's going to be awesome. I thought Jason Hayward was going to be awesome. Turns out it's just Freddie Freeman. Um no, I'm just not doing it. I've never have, and I never will. The guy bats below 265 for his career, and he's a shortstop, right? Or is he second base? Yeah. I mean, he's a middle infielder, and he bats below 265. I'm not interested. I don't care if he can hit if he can hit home runs with the new juiced ball. Half of the Amer- half of the senior and the junior circuit can do that. I mean, 
hitting home runs is not an impressive feat. Expect just go look at Mark Reynolds. Tell me what well, I mean. Now, Mark Reynolds was able to hang on a lot longer than I think people anticipated, especially when he he felt like someone that f- totally fell off and then ended up resurging with the Colorado Rockies and a few other teams. But I don't care. Like Mark Mark Reynolds was was exactly what he was. He was a guy that hit a bunch of home runs, and he would also rewrite the record book for strikeouts every single season. So there's like cool. You got to you can get just because Javier Baez is, is the annual recipient of the Aaron Hill Award for the most powerful hitting second baseman or or most powerful hitting shortstop or middle infielder. No one cares. I mean, seriously. And he he has one Gold Glove. He got it in twenty twenty. Honestly, he probably won that on namesake. I'm just being real. I don't think Javier Baez is that good. I mean, and just I don't. And he and he had a terrible, terrible 2020. So, um, yeah, I'm not looking at Chris Bryant's numbers. I don't care. Um, Anthony Rizzo made five million dollars when during the 2016 World Series. Five million dollars. So, for all these guys that have stolen money, not only is this guy been shortchanged and i know i know how baseball works the contracts are, are super weird and you, ha- you you hang on to guys rights and you don't have to pay them for forever until you end up paying them way more than they could ever possibly be worth ever um but still uh anthony rizzo made five million dollars for the 2016 world series cubs and he ended up making seven million the next two seasons after that so he's gonna make 16 and a half this year before he becomes unrestricted free agent and i just think it's time for you know i think the cubs like i said they're in this position where they're under new management and they're faced with a situation like the Royals and the Rays have been faced with before them. But I don't know that they're ready. Like, like the Rays have just been such a well-run team. And I just, I don't know that they're ready. I, I don't know that the Royals have necessarily ever recovered from losing those guys. Now the guys on the Royals all, all spread out and had different, had varying amounts of, of success. Some of them, you know, I think Lorenzo Cain was really good to start, but now, you know, now that those players are getting older, I'm sure the Royals are happy that they didn't have to pay all those guys. But if you're going to pay one of these guys, I think if you're the Cubs, you should definitely hang on to Anthony Rizzo. And I don't think it's safe to say that they're just going to build this thing back up the way those other organizations did, Uh, in particular the Rays. I just – I'm not I'm not as faithful in the new regime as I would have been Theo Epstein. Theo Epstein broke the two longest the two biggest curses in all of sports and he broke them both by being such a good front office personnel and I just I don't know that the Cubs have that in place and I really I would like to see them hang on to Anthony Rizzo. Um I've actually I've actually sort of renounced my fandom of the Cubs since since the first pitch of the 2016 World Series. Like I had to draw a line in the sand. Like I, oh, American League International League team. Like this would be awesome. Like my two favorite teams. Like no, no. As soon as that first pitch was thrown, it was I don't know like what sort of universal universal gravitational pull I encountered there but it, there was no doubt and and I have a and I have a deep connection like I I've, I've gone to Wrigley Field multiple times throughout both my childhood and my adolescence into my like you know later teenage years like I've 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 really grown up seeing the changes around Wrigley Field and I'm trying to explain to my friend Carlos like them making all all of these uh technological advancements to Wrigley Field has really just ruined it i mean when you when i went and, and they had the scoreboard and they, they actually had the electron sorry and they had the electronic scoreboard or whatever i was just like what are you people doing i mean 
I know that it was COVID or whatever, and we're cutting costs, but this was several years ago. I think you can afford the guy that stands in there and smokes a cigarette and puts up the score. I think you can afford that guy. Just give him 20 bucks and some Cracker Jacks. I'm sure he'd just love to do that job. Like, like the Cleveland, the Cleveland, the Cleveland baseball team infamously has, you know, the doom, 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 doom. They have the drummer guy. How do you screw up? How do you screw up like the the ambiance and the feeling that Wrigley Field gave everyone that's ever been there? You could have, I feel like you could have done stuff to the clubhouses, you know, improved the clubhouses, made them 21st century, without without really just making a bastardization of what used to be Wrigley Field. It's a it's it's not it's not anything how it used to be. And if they're going to hang on to the championship window from 2016, I think Anthony Rizzo would be a great guy to build around when you consider stuff off the field like how how involved he's been. He's from Parkland, Florida where that tragedy took place several a few years ago with the mass shooting incident at their local high school. I think Anthony Rizzo and that that he he had at the the high school that was attacked, Anthony Rizzo was a graduate of. So he's been an awesome guy and when I think of Chris Bryant, I just think of express ads and I just think of him being like a wannabe model and being a Scott Boris uh, being a Scott Boris guy, and yeah, Anthony Rizzo is not represented by Scott Boris. So I would love to see the Cubs re-sign Anthony Rizzo. There's no doubt about it. I think he's someone they could build around. He's a he's a perennial um, 100 RBI, 30 home run guy, 30 home runs and 100 RBIs, no matter what, every season. I think that's that's solid. And it's not like Miguel Cabrera where the guy won a triple crown or, excuse me, Albert Pujols where he was MVP caliber seven years out of 11 in St. Louis. There's not this ridiculous peak for him to really drop off from. We just got to keep hitting that 30 home run, 100 RBI plateau and continue to have a pretty decent batting average, really good batting average, which is career batting average. 271. 271, Javier Baez. Okay? So for anyone that wants to talk about Javier Baez, how about you swing the freaking bat? I'm just... I mean, they got rid of Starlin Castro because they thought Javier Baez was going to be the man. All Starlin Castro's done is just continue to be Starlin Castro pretty freaking good. He's like almost hit 350 a couple times. He's just, you know... He's just one of the better hitters at his position. Let's see Starlin Castro's career batting average. Since I'm now I'm upset and I'm feeling like Javier Baez has been able to skate for far too long. Starlin Castro is 31 years old and he's a career 280 hitter. Javier Baez. <sighs> well, now that I'm upset myself and there's nowhere else to go from here. <laughs> Javier Baez is a joke, and Chris Bryant is an express model. So let's let's sign Anthony Rizzo, Cubs. Maybe me get some of my respect back. The Bulls, with a with one trade, won back my whole heart, my whole fandom. I know I'm wearing a PG. It's actually a PG twenty four shirt for the realists out there. Think that Paul George has always worn thirteen his whole career. He's been wearing 24. He was wearing 24, and I've been rocking 24 since he had it. Screw that PG. I think what happened was he went down with the leg injury and wanted to be like, oh, well, I'm coming back with – snap my leg in half. I better come back with something cool. So now I'm PG-13. Well, 24 was a cool number too. And so, yeah, now it's a classic. But, yeah, uh, the Cubs could win me back by signing Anthony Rizzo and – letting those other guys walk and starting and start starting a new a new era i think because i'm definitely sick of the 2016 era cubs i can't i cannot stand them but who knows we'll see where the cubs franchise goes from here um i it's kind of funny they're they're about as just a state of flux as the cleveland baseball team is so 
five years later and both teams are really in it in the, from that world series five years later they're both really in transition so we'll see how things shape up you guys have a great rest of your day though and i'll uh, talk to you later